Welcome to episode seven of the Gap Down Backer podcast uh, with myself and Coach Derry. Uh, today we're going to talk belly follow, and um, I am going to preface this to start our episode with this is not just a give me episode or just a freebie, as Coach Derry initially wanted to put it when I talked to him about this earlier this morning, um, because I am pissed off at this play um, because we couldn't run it efficiently. Um, I have a quarterback that can run a 4-5, and this should be a home run play. And it got two yards, and then three yards, and then two yards, and then minus four, and then I don't even know what else just because I just got frustrated by it. We started running down follow better than we ran belly follow. And now I'm also going to preface this. I'm not like, I'm not going to go back through all the belly rules. Um, if you want to know what the belly rules are for this, it's essentially just go to episode two, listen to the beginning of the podcast where I break down the rules. That's the rules for belly follow. Nothing changes. The only thing that truly changes for most people who run belly follow is the fullback becomes a blocker. Okay. And when you have a battery ram of a fullback like we did, again, we should be able to run belly follow. But usually, I mean, and, and, and I go back to the same. It's a combination of not, I, I, as I thought about more, it comes back to our backside did not get that backside against that linebacker. And that, again, became the constant problem. And so either the safety was coming downhill because our fullback had to pick up that backside backer or he wouldn't get the backside backer as he went to safety and the backside backer would make the play. Um, But yeah, uh, Coach Jerry, do you want to start on your thoughts on belly follow before I continue to rant? I mean, I I think just kind of like any kind of belly constraint play, um, it's got to mirror what you do. And you got to run belly really well. And I think at times we didn't run belly extremely well. But I thought we ran it well enough to run that play. I mean, I, I, I never expected it to hit like a home run play because we just didn't run belly amazingly. But no, I mean, I, I was just as baffled as you to the point where I vomited every time we ran that play after like week two. I was like, ah. Oh. Now, now the other thing. Lost. Oh, defense has got to get better to go back on the field. Now, as, as I think about, like, the other thing is, like, and, and we, I hinted at it a little bit on episode six, is the fakes. And I think it's a combination of two things. I think when you're running plays like this, and, and this is true for belly follow or belly keep, which belly keep is an outside run, and we'll talk about belly. Belly keep is a whole different animal on its own because there's some blocking changes. And I, don't wanna, I originally was going to include these two together, but I chose not to. Um, but belly follow... I, and just keeps in general is you still need to give a decent fake, but I don't need you to ride it the full way through. Okay. I, I like you, you're like part of the problem is, and I think one of our problem was, is we, we lost either too much momentum or our feet, our quarterback footwork got too tight or we didn't fall. Like it should be more of a constant movement. And I think at times where we got too stuck in the ground and he had to pick back up his speed. Um, that's kind of my observation. I could be wrong. Um, and, I, I mean, we, we probably should have coached it better, and that, that is what that is. But, like, it should have been a home run play for us this year, and it wasn't. I, I, and to your point, maybe not a home run play, but with the quarterback athlete we had, I mean, we should have been able to pop it 15, 25 yards. Like, I mean, that, that, that boy ran quarterback trap twice for 100 yards. Yeah. I mean – like, yeah, and I don't know if we'll ever get the quarterback trap on here. That's a whole other – that's a special answer for a certain team that know, get on my nerves. That defense was tough to, tough to score on, too. Yeah. Well, we, we can talk some point attacking the 7-1 and one diamond with the wing tee. Um, but, yeah. Um, now, I, I kind of want to get into real quick why you call belly um, follow. Um, before I kind of get into my thoughts on it, what's your kind of thoughts on why you would call belly follow – um, and what kind of defense maybe you prefer it again, and et cetera. Go ahead, Coach. Um, really, I kind of obviously from a movement standpoint, uh, I like running it to a um, a, a five, a 50 defense where there's a five and we can kind of fan it or know it or an on call with yeah. a one. It's something that creates a little bit bigger of a hole uh, that allows the wing and the Inside, uh, the fullback to really pick up the linebackers. Um, I think that's your ideal defense. And I think you run 
Belly follow, if not your home run play per se, but your change up to get 10 yards. You know what I mean? Where if you got a if you got a guy that's a linebacker that attack ISO block, like their life depends on it, then being able to run a belly follow, you know what I mean? Can mess with that linebacker. I think there's the instances like that. Um, I've, I've always been, you belly keep it, you home run play. You know what I mean? That's when like yeah. you kind of pull it and just go. Um, but uh, I think really, I love the, anytime you can get a bubble, it, it wasn't, I never liked the X blocking. Yeah, I don't. I don't think uh, the X is good for this. I I kind of with you. Either the fan or the on calls are better for it. Um, I just think you get more of a natural bubble, and just in case you have good filling linebackers, it's a, it's it's better for quarterback. Um, whereas, I mean, you're talking a tight window for that X block, especially with the lead blocker, an additional lead blocker going through there. Um, I think that's another reason you run it is just to gain numbers. Um, yeah. I, I think I, at that point, I'm just saying, I'm going to outnumber you to the point of attack, and you're either going to adjust so I can run something else back to, say, the strong side, instead of running belly follow to the um, quick side, or I'm just going to brutalize you up and down the field with my with probably a decently athletic quarterback. I think the other thing we got to touch here, I think your quarterback doesn't have to be a blazer to run it, but he's still got to be able to move a little bit. Like, more laterally, and honestly, man, I think it benefits shorter quarterbacks better. Yeah. You know, I mean, because uh, it allows you to hide behind blockers. Um, man, I'll tell you, I mean, really, just kind of, if we're right, it looks like a good little triple option play. I see triple teams run it all the freaking time. Um, I had it ran against me all the freaking time. It wasn't <laughs> fun. Well, so, uh, well it's, it's also kind of the, like, if you want to run, like, belly option or – some sort of option, but you don't. Yes. Your, court, your quarterback isn't to that ready yet. Maybe he's a freshman, sophomore, or maybe he's a first year starter. Instead of having to worry about him reading stuff, you can just run belly follow and then you can run belly keep. All right, so you have both those in the playbook. So at that point, you can add that op- it'll look like option um, and so forth. Um, give me one. There we go. Um, but I, I think you can kind of do either. Um, but to me, that's probably more wise than running two belly option. You can run keep and follow, give similar looks, and not have to yeah. worry about him having to read it. Because, again, like, first, I mean, you're talking 14, 15, 16, 17 year old kids. You're asking to try to read a defense. So that's not necessarily an optimal thing. If you know this is the look you're getting, and tell them this is, okay, follow here, keep there. Like, yeah, when I. I mean, I think the most important thing it does is softens up the linebackers, makes them think, slows them down. You know, if they're not attacking an ISO block the same as they would early in the game because they don't want to get burned. You know what I mean? Where yeah. now you got them thinking about that play. It's a good keep you honest kind of play. Um, I, I like it. It's just, I, I think part of the problem is, too, we, we didn't do a very good job getting north and south on it. Yeah. You know, I, I think he kind of. For some reason it got wide. Like, like the more you talk about, it, the more I think about. It. Like, it, it just got too wide at times, and I don't know if that's because we didn't spend enough time on the footwork, or we didn't spend enough time on something. Like, thought it was Madden, right? Get out to the to the outside. Yeah. That's how you score touchdowns? You know, not not very many kids want to stick their nose up in the middle. You know. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think he was a classier kid. He just wanted to score. You know what I mean? He, I mean, he he gave us his all at it, and that's all we could ask for. And, um, oh, he's phenomenal for us. But. Again, it, I, like, it just frustrates me. Um, so on top of that, I, I will say if anybody runs belly follow really well, um, please leave comments below, message me, uh, message Coach Derry, because I would like to get it fixed. Like I said, this, is, this, whole, this podcast is not always going to be us giving you answers. Okay, Sometimes it might be us asking for help, us having ideas. Um, it might be theoretical stuff. It might be, here's footwork on this. You might have a better idea for footwork or blocking. I'll gladly exchange ideas and go back with people. Like, this is an opportunity for all of us to learn. Like, you could think I'm an idiot. Be like, well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, then tell me what I did, said wrong. I, I, I want to learn. Like, that's that's the point of this podcast. As I said in episode one, like, we want to learn more about the wing tee. Okay? Part of it is he wants to be able to stop it, and I want to be able to run it more efficiently. Um, and we, we just both have experience in either wing tee offenses, double wing offenses, triple option offenses. 
So, I mean, we kind of can pull from here and there um, and so forth. So, um, my defensive coach is giving me a hard time. I miss offense sometimes. Not a <laughs> lot, but I miss it sometimes. So, this is kind of like my escape to where <laughs> Your escape. maybe I can just get it out, you know what I mean? Just talk about it. So that way, yeah. when it's time for like, me with my staff, I don't think about the offense. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and, that, and that's a benefit we have that not every school has is that, we, I mean, we have an offensive staff, defensive staff, and then I kind of just steal all of you to do special teams with me, um, which we got better at the end of the year, but it is what it is. Um, is there any – I mean, you talk – I mean, I, I, I didn't really get to mention – get to mention this, but I, I agree wholeheartedly with you about um, the fan and the on. I, I think I briefly mentioned it, but like I said, I, I don't really want to run into a three and a five. Um, that's not ideal. Um, I Personally, I'd probably rather run it against an even front um, for that reason, um, especially if you're going to like, I mean, we play, I mean, we get, we play a lot of four, four teams, but we get a lot of weird, like we'll get the six, two look, we'll get the like four, four, like the old like split stack look, like it just I, I mean, those off backers I, I personally prefer it against. Um, but yeah. Um, the other thing is I, I think it's and, and I kinda leave my aspect at least finish up for me here, is I think another good time to run it is if if you got teams that are just like kinda like the rule for like the triple is tackle the full back no matter what. If you get some of those, that's where the belly keeps and belly follows are really successful is they're, if they're just going to spike your fullback every time, use him as a decoy. I mean, and no, I mean, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, you, you got any, like I said, this wasn't going to be a super long episode. Um, is there any, and I kind of like asking you at this end of each episode, which we've kind of gotten all the theme of, is there any technique stuff, especially for, because you are a former O-line coach, um, is there any technique stuff for this that you think that kind of gets unappreciated? Um, I know you mentioned not X blocking on it because that kind of creates some problems. Mm-hmm. But is there any footwork stuff or um, stuff to be aware of that kind of uh, we didn't hit on? Yeah, uh, probably a, a little bit more emphasis on maybe not taking such a lateral step and trying to open it up a little bit. I think sometimes we took a lateral step and caught the guy. Um, other than that, from an O line standpoint. I, I would always teach a little bit more when we did this more 45 degree rather than 10 degrees, almost like a trap, you know what I mean? Blocking the one. And that way you kind of created a little bit more of a wall, you know what I mean? And open it up a little bit. Um, because it is a, unfortunately it is a slower development play. So if you took a 10 degree step, um, I, I think it oftentimes led to people being able to clue back in, you know what I mean, and making a play, you know, kind of almost like a screen, right? You want to set them up coming up the field, you know what I mean, and then you ride them out that way. That would be something I would do a little bit different. Um, other than that, I mean, not really. Uh, you obviously still want to make it look like belly. Yeah. Um, I, I think um, – I, I think the one thing that I, I, I would do a little bit differently is the wing would always pick up the play side backer still. And um, the inside linebacker, the backside linebacker gets picked up by the fullback. Yeah. Looking like he's cutting back and trying to create a seam that way. Well, I also thought about it. Like the, I think the other good thing to do is that, is that shuffle motion we've talked about the past couple episodes. I think that's great for this. Because because yeah. your plate side wing can go to outside backer, your yep. shuffle wing can insert on that in, inside backer, your full back can pick up first guy, and again again it comes back to belly just one on one is that back your backside guard and tackle have to scoop and then get up to the next level. If not yep. you, if not this doesn't matter like it's, and they got to stay on that block longer. Yes, it's a slower develop and play. Yeah, it's not like we're handing it off and going. It's hand it off and follow. You know what I mean? Like, that quarterback being a little patient, read and block, you know, you can't just let a backside three technique chase it down from behind. You know what I mean? You got to get on the guys and you got to lock on them. I and mean, that's a, that's a crucial element to this play. Now, I, I, one thing I didn't ask about this and, and, and like I said, we ran, we ran down and follow too. Um, and what, for the teams that run belly strong, do you think, do you, would you run belly follow the strong side? I don't, that's, I just thought of this, like, I'd say, my gut says no, 
Like you're saying, good. I mean, I, I I mean you what, can, but like, I mean, I mean, it, 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 you would probably need to modify the tight end a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, but I mean, he draw it up in a whiteboard. In, in all seriousness, one of my favorite quotes is from Bill Belichick, and he said, "Don't let you stop if it's a good idea for you. Don't let it stop you from doing it just because it's unconventional. You know, just because people don't do it doesn't mean you don't doesn't mean you don't have to do it. If you think it works, draw it up, practice it, see how it looks. If yeah. it looks good, circle it, put it in the call sheet. You know, um, I don't know. I would have to draw it up and kind of see where things go. Uh, uh, but if you got, if, if you, uh, honestly, if you got that under front, if they're playing an under front, that, that'd be a way to run it against a 50 team. Yeah. If they run like our under front to the tight wing side and you got a one and a six bubble still or a seven, I, I would very much consider running it you know what i mean have yeah. the i mean you could still know it i mean at that point you could have a the tackle block out the tight end block out insert underneath you know what i mean it could work it'll be a little unorthodox yeah. i'm sure but shit i don't see why it couldn't well, I, the, I don't know if you got three to the t- that side i don't know if it'll work well the other thing i thought oh yeah i mean i don't know like <laughs> This this is the game where I like I, I I just prefer running the split inside because I I know what I'm probably going to get if I if it's an odd front it's probably an under if it's an even front I'm probably getting a one and a five yep. um yeah or or you get like double twos and they're slanting but I know which way he's going to slant I mean I please please slant to the the weak side please I mean I, you give me my strong side stuff all day long but that's a whole other thing so um. Uh, Coach Jerry, any final thoughts on, on belly follow before I have an aneurysm trying to fr- be frustrated with this play? Other, let's get to the drawing board and let's fix it. Yep. I mean, I, I mean, so again, before we go, if you have any any experience running belly follow, any good ideas, just, yeah, shoot, please comment, shoot us a message. I'd love to hear from you. Um, like I said, we're always just trying to learn. Um, kind of a preview for next next week. Um, tentatively, uh, it'll be belly pass part one. Uh, there's two belly passes in the wing T offense. Um, there's, and like you, you look at, and some people call the one of them just dart pass. Um, I, we just call it belly pass. Um, we don't run the other one, the, the corner flat backside drag. We'll talk again. That's all for next two episodes, next one or two episodes. We'll figure out how we're going to break belly up, belly pass up. Um, we should also have an upcoming guest here in episode eight or nine as well. Um, we're working on a couple coaches. Um, I, I have been very thankful to the coaching community on willing to come on to the Gap Down Backer podcast. We got two guests already. Uh, we're working on a couple other ones. Um, that way we can kind of expand everybody's knowledge, uh, introduce some new coaches to the coaching community. Um, so again, Coach Derry, thank you. Um, and that was episode seven of the Gap Down Backer podcast, talking belly follow. Thank you.